Caddis Maximus here again. This time we're looking at Bond Huss Hex Key Wrenches, Hex and Star that is. Bond Huss is a pretty old brand and they're known as being some of the best for Hex Key Wrenches. Obviously that's debatable as it is in all tools what is quote unquote really the best for a given type of tool. But one thing to really remember is not every manufacturer, all their tools are the best. You always have to have a conglomeration of tools because some uh, tools are better from some manufacturers than others. And I really recommend Bond Huss when it comes to L key wrenches. Uh, we have a kind of an electric variety. I don't have a lot of metric ones here. Primarily because I bought these when I was working in a machine shop and just ran into a ton of uh, Imperial fasteners. Although I do have a few metrics and obviously metrics and other brands of wrenches. We have a few selections here. We have uh, primarily Imperial uh, wrenches. We have the long handle ball and uh, or T handle wrenches. We have some standard L wrenches as well as a classic version so you can see what they look like when they're old. We have pin and socket or security hex L wrenches and those are actually kind of hard to find. It seems a lot easier to find security or pin and socket style star wrenches uh, versus the actual hex version of that. And of course a metric set. And this is my very first set. We'll take a look at the 5mm because it's one of my most used wrenches. With Bond Huss, when it comes to their standard wrenches, if you, it's almost impossible to see here. Let's take a... I just wanted to show what the logo looks like. They do stamp the logo down to pretty darn small wrenches. Um, but sometimes it's pretty hard to see. But you, when you're digging around the uh, hex key boxes at any kind of used place, you can see if they're, you know, Allens or Bond Huss or any of those because they do stamp on them. But that isn't even completely consistent. These are standard length wrenches. Uh, as you can see the wear, this is a 5 millimeter that I've been using for bicycles for a long, long time. Many, many, many years. And it's held up pretty well. It is starting to wear on the end. The nice thing about uh, hex key wrenches, you can just grind them down a little bit to refresh the ends. Another big deal is Bond Huss's warranty. It's like Craftsman, it's pretty much unlimited. And what I mean by that, let me show you here. Where is... What I mean by their warranty, one thing is Bond Huss does advertise that they are uh, gorilla proof tools. And then the second thing, and they clearly say that right here, is if this tool breaks or fails to meet your expectation in any way, simply return it, period. We will replace it free of charge. Uh, that's fail to meet your expectations in any way. That's the same thing as Craftsman. If you don't like, technically, uh, you know, that's as unlimited as it gets. Fails to meet expectations in any way means that you looked at a wrench like this, it was very slightly bent. Or maybe you're looking at the stamping on the back of a wrench and you didn't like it. That could fail to meet your expectations and you could return it. Obviously, that would be taking it pretty far, but nonetheless, when manufacturers choose to use wording like that in their warranties, then they do have to expect uh, to really honor them. Uh, that's really all there is to it. Let's take a quick look at these. These are known as thumb spinners. And these are star. And I do like these kind of spinners for when you're doing assembly work because you can just break the fastener easily and then spin it out. These Bond Husses I got on sale at a pawn shop, or it wasn't on sale, they were a really good price at a pawn shop. And to tell you the truth, these are probably one of my least favorite Bond Huss tools. And there's a variety of reasons why I'm a little disappointed in these uh, finger spinners for, and they make them in hex and all sorts of different things. One is, is this beam here is actually pretty darn large. The little nub is a bit short and it actually is a little difficult to really use and get a good grip on. And thirdly, which was particularly disappointing, is most of these are really strong. They use an L wrench and you have lots of torque. The Bond Huss doesn't. The Bond Huss, it's just a shank and if you really look, you can see two little slots where they've just pinched the side of the metal to make two little wings and that's how it's attached. So I'm worried under high torque, especially on the larger uh, T20, and this T15 of maybe the handle uh, breaking on you. I don't think that's going to happen, but it still isn't quite my favorite. If we were to compare this to some of the more, uh, some other styles, like here's a Mitsubishi Materials. There's a rare tool brand. 
they have these in single flag version or flag versions as well as T-handle versions. We have some Weehaws here too, which are really nice. And you can see on these that they use a taller finger spinner or a taller nub, and that's actually a lot easier to grip. It isn't so much that the Bond Huts are larger diameter, they're just too darn short. And so that's one of the things that I don't like about it. Also on like these Weehaws and this Mitsubishi, you can even see through the hole in there that they use a standard L-wrench and they're very, very strong on the Weehaw. The L wrench goes to this side and then they conveniently drill a hole just to make it more convenient to hang or to put on a uh, tool pegs, which I also appreciate. And Bonhus didn't put any holes in there. Even though they're rubber coated, it's, that's really pretty irrelevant to some of the other properties I look for in finger spinners. So that should be enough talk about finger spinners. Let's take a look at these T-handles. These are pretty common also for assembly work. One of the advantages to, there's other brands like Elkin that use a uh, large steel bar that's welded to the shank. What Bonhus does is claim that they balance the width of this bar, the amount of torque that you can get on it with the strength of the shank. I've always liked these, but one thing that they kind of uh, encourage you to do is most are ball end and so uh, they encourage you to break fasteners with the ball end, and that's generally not recommended because it can break the tool more easily, and it damages the fasteners quite a bit because it gouges out the center portion of the fastener. Uh, on these smaller ones, they don't put the ball end, and I can understand why it was just too many issues that they were having. They do twist quite a bit, and I have twisted these and even broken them, and that's what's always kind of disappointed me is just how long they are. Like this 3 8 one, uh, this thing's over a foot long, so it does give you a nice reach, but uh, I didn't, that has always been kind of a question for me, is why these things are just so unbelievably long. So part of the reason I even bought them was just because of that, because they have real high access, and it's real hard to find Allen wrenches that are uh, have a real extended length like that. The other thing they advertise is the high mass of the handle. Once you get the fastener broken, you can spin it, and it has a lot of inertia to keep the fastener spinning in or out. And that is pretty nice. And they could even be used as a hammer. Not recommended, but with the strength and quality of the bond husk, uh in a pinch, I'm sure that that wrench would hold up as a hammer. And why, why would I even mention that? Because it's a foot long, and it has a heavy head, and it is curved like a drilling hammer. So when you hit, it would always hit at the same point. <laughs> That's a little weird, but I've seen, seen that happen more than once where these have been used as hammers, particularly hitting the heads of hex fasteners to cause the threads to get upset so that you can go ahead and remove them. Moving on, we have both the metric and the imperial or fractional security hex key bit or hex set, and see they have a hole drilled in the center. One thing I will mention about these bond husses is that they make sure that the hole is really well centered. On cheaper uh, pin and socket style security fasteners, oftentimes the hole that's in the middle of the wrench uh, is not properly centered. And sometimes, and I've had this issue where you can't get the wrench into the fastener because the hole is so badly offset that uh, it blocks the wrench. They do put the hole on both sides, but and I really like these because it's hard to find pin and socket hex, uh, especially in an AOL wrench set. Another thing I did want to mention is that on all the bond husses, they stamped them, but on these security ones, they didn't. It just has this, di this kind of uh, diamond pattern I, to indicate that it's a security wrench. And I always thought that was curious why bond husses didn't put their name on it. And it's real strange. And these are definitely bond husses because I did get, there are from the package. There's the part numbers for both of those. One thing that was disappointing about this security L wrench hex key set was that they were much smaller than the traditional style. So the more, the most common or current when you get an imperial hex key set like this, this would be the current bond husses. It will be a 13 piece set. The older ones were a 12 piece set just because they didn't have the three eighths. However, when you get the security L wrench set, it's only an eight piece set and the metric is just six lonely pieces. And I was a little disappointed in that, that the metric wouldn't even come with a 10 millimeter, uh, considering how much money, these are actually pretty darn expensive L wrenches. Now, the security L wrenches are recommended to get ones from a warranty like Bond Husk because of the hole, they actually aren't quite as strong and, and can break a little bit more often. 
So to finish off this review, we can compare actual very old school uh, 80s or 90s Bond Husses. I'm not exactly sure when these were made versus the current unit. So here's the current model and they're really uh, top notch, top notch quality. But there are a few differences. Bond Huss used to be patented. Uh, I believe they invented and patented the ball and hex key set uh, flat out. And you can see that they do a really nice job, but the cuts are just the same as any other ball and hex key set. They just, you know, do a nice little curve there. Now, what the patent was, was on these. And if we look a little more closely, we can see what Bond Huss had actually machined out uh, a little radius there at the top of the round ball and it allows them to return just a little bit more smoothly and you get a little bit steeper angle especially in fasteners where the ball sinks down a little deeper and that is I believe what the patent was because these are patented and uh, Monticello Minnesota is where they used to be made you can see the finish is uh, not quite as nice as they used to be on the old ones and how they just don't do that little undercut anymore. Once the patent ran out, they just decided that they didn't want to spend the, the money on additional machine time and tooling to make that little radius. But I will have to say that the older ones uh, really were a little bit nicer because of that. And that's how you can tell an old Bond Huss is that little radius there. So I did want to point that out. All right, I think that just about ends my 12-minute diatribe about <laughs> Bond Huss hex key wrenches. I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Caddis Maximus out.